Hello, hello. How's everybody doing? Mm. Hello, hello. What's going on? Man. Mm. Welcome back to another episode of God's Concept. I'm your host, Mr. Pagan. Today's discussion is basically me putting out there that, um, I don't know where that came from. I just had a vicious, like, blank mind. Like, my mind just went completely blank. I don't know where that came from. Since I tried to start this podcast, um, my mind just went completely blank. I have no idea where that came from. But um, I know where I'm going, though, right? So I'm, I'm going to continue right there. I know where I'm going. I don't know where the blank mind came from because I had the whole podcast schemed out, planned out, and everything. Um, this episode, and as soon as I started to get everything going, my mind went blank, so I don't know what that was about, but you know how it is, the forces that be, the powers that be, um, has ancient technology, they got ancient wisdom and technology, so if they don't want me to convey a message to anybody, they can merely give me a blank mind in the middle of me trying to do something. And I notice it's like that when I'm trying to uh, when I'm trying to do books, when I'm trying to create music, when I'm trying to do my podcasts and things like that. Um, sometimes my mind will just go blank from what I, what the actual message was supposed to be um, when I initially started, you know, doing the work, whether that be podcast, book, or music. So I realize that I just got to talk through that. I still got to work through that because when that happens, it gives you a level of like. Uh, like, what the fuck is like a little, it's not depression, but it's like, um, it's like repression. Like you can't really express yourself the way you want to express yourself or get those clear, con- concise thoughts out. You know what I mean? So I'm going to push on from that and I'm going to start right here. You know what I mean? This episode is basically about sometimes you not being able to reason with anybody else. You got to reason with your higher consciousness, your higher self, you know, um, at times you can't, you can't find anybody to understand what you're talking about. You can't find anybody to see things from your point of view. Cause your point of view is uniquely yours, uniquely unique to you. You know what I mean? You might have folks that agree to some, some, um, some extent you might have people who see it the same way as you in a lot of, in a lot of different ways. But your personal accounts and your life, the things that you go through, is unique to you. Yeah, somebody might have a story similar, but their story still isn't your story. That's why when you're trying to reason, sometimes when you're trying to talk and have a conversation, sometimes when you're praying, you can't do it around anybody else because they'll interrupt your connection with uh, whatever frequency that you want, whatever whatever you're feeling, whatever energy that is, whatever your soul, your spirit is is feeling, and then it, you know, transit, you know, that connection to the soul and to the intellectual realm is one that's easily uh, played with and, uh, and manipulated, right? A person could come in your atmosphere, and even though that person isn't isn't like directly fucking with you, just their mere presence. <laughs> Just that mere presence will fuck with you and bother and, and hinder what you what it is you're trying to do. Now, you can sit up there and tell this person, oh, please, can you just move? I'm, I'm doing something. I'm trying to focus on what I'm doing. They'll either get upset with you that you're trying to uh, exclude them out of what you're doing. or They might not even be trying to participate or help at all. They might just be in that area and you're like, you know, what you're doing here right now? You know what I mean? I'm doing such and such. I'm doing A and B. And right now you're doing something completely different or opposite from what I'm doing or just watching what I'm doing or just um, interfering in what I'm doing in a way. And it happens a lot. 
you know, it happens in, that's the physical aspect of not being able to relate or reason with another person. Because we're all spiritually different. Spiritually, we're all different. Spiritually, we're, we're different. We have different levels of spirituality. We have different um, spiritual beings as well. You know what I mean? The spirit that dwells in me, that might not be the same. It might not be on the same frequency with the spirit that dwells in you. It might not have the same en energetic charge. This is why some of us have um, attributes that's greater than others. This is why some of us can, can see ourselves doing certain things in life and, and shaping and forming a future for ourselves different from a lot of other people. You know what I mean? It's because we got a different frequency. We vibing off of something different. Our spirits is different. We think it's... Um, you know, we, we try to boil it down to just being personality or characteristics a lot. But that personality and characteristic that you exude outwardly, physically, um, is also in you internally. So that, that that that's why you have different personalities and characteristics, right? That's why we are different people with our own individuality. Because our soul, our spirit is different, you know, than, than others' spirit. I mean... It's a good thing. It's a great thing that we all different and everything and we can come together and create something good and, and something great and um, and be prosperous and learn from each other and, you know, just share information, you know, but it's also it's also a bit dangerous when you don't understand that everybody spiritually is different. So intellectually, you're going to be different. Physically, you're going to be different. You're going to be attracted to different things. You might have similar taste in some things, but you might be attracted to the same thing for a completely different reason than somebody else. See, some of the attraction levels are there because it's like um, some people want to use, some people want to help, some people just want to hold and love and, you know, this and that. And sometimes a person would just, their soul will recognize your soul, their spirit will recognize your spirit, and they just want to get with you to hinder you or hold you down or hold you back. It's because that energy that they have, that frequency that they have, has been floating around for a long time. And that that same energy of spirit frequency sees something in you that they saw before. So they might be doing things to you that they don't even know. They're not even conscious of. They, they're not even conscious of the things that they do to you or how, you, or how they treat you. Because the soul that dwells in them is so used to the actions that they're taking, either against you for you, with you, by you, you know what I mean? Fubu. <laughs> but that's what it is, man. And we got to realize that a lot of times, well, I realize, you know, I, I'm here to give you my synopsis on this. I realize that a lot of times we try to reason, uh, reason or rationalize or even have uh, um, an intellectual conversation with somebody that's not on, on our level. Right. That's not on our same frequency. That's not feeling that same vibe or energy that you feeling. And that's not to call them stupid or slow or slighting them in any type of way, because everybody has their own level of intellect. Right. Everybody has their own, own level of awareness and intuition and their own spiritual aura that that guides them through life. You know what I mean? That that energy that gives them a different perception than you. And in, some, in many cases, their perception and point of view about a thing would be good. You know what I mean? You could see how you could utilize that in a way. You know, some people got a very strategic. Some people are very caring. Some people are very selfish. Some people are, are very uh, needy or greedy in a way. And it's like, you know, some people are just naturally angry and hateful. Some people are good teachers. Some people are great learners. Some people are great lovers. They know how to spread love and joy and peace. Like, and all, you know what I mean? And it's because we all, you know what I mean? You have those different uh, characteristic traits, those different personalities out there because you have different spiritual energy from a lot of people. Sometimes you might not be on the same spiritual level as a person, but you're trying to get them to on your level or either vice versa. You're trying to get to their level. And it just never match up. You could pretend, you could fake, you could you could you could try to get on a level as much as you want to, 
but it's because their energy is different. You know what I mean? Their energy is completely different. They're a different type of person from you. You know what I mean? And a lot of us fall victim to 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 a lot of crimes and, and a a lot of lives that aren't meant for us. You know what I mean? Sometimes we get stuck in a lifestyle that ain't even really ain't even really meant for us. That's not even really our personality. But we stuck in that because we attached ourselves to a personality who does gravitate towards that type of lifestyle or or, or you know that type of uh, way of uh, living. You know what I mean? And it's you 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 can lose yourself pulling on the coattail of somebody else. You know what I mean? You following somebody else's journey. You could lose your your own journey, your own personality, your own point of view. You could lose you. You know what I mean? This is why a lot of us uh, uh, sit up there and withdraw from, from people. We withdraw from people. We withdraw from society. We more uh, introverted because we're trying to connect back with us. You know what I mean? Introverts are only, uh, is merely people that's either trying to connect back with themselves and, and figure out who they are and realize their purpose in life, or they know their purpose in life and who they are already. And they haven't found anybody to be extroverted type with, you know what I mean? Or they might extrovert sometimes, go out with these people, that people. But a lot of times they, they in their own bubble, they're in their own world because they don't really feel like they're a bird of the feather, a bird of the feather flocking together with somebody that's of the same yield as them. You know what I mean? Of the same guild as them. You know, a lot of times, you know, we see the differences in each other. A lot of times we see and notice the differences in each other, you know what I mean, that that we naturally have. You might see that your child is different from the different personality from your other child. Or, you know, all the time you notice that your friend is has a way different personality or characteristic than your other friend. Or your, your new lover, right, your new boyfriend or girlfriend, they are completely different from your old boyfriend or girlfriend. And that's what attracts you to them. But that attraction to your boyfriend or girlfriend, right, to the new boyfriend or girlfriend, don't necessarily make them better for you. It's just different. You trying out a different personality and characteristic. A lot of us can't let ourselves get lost in that because you wind up losing somebody that was really in your quarter, in your corner, and and better suited for you than a new person that you're chasing after or that you're trying to pursue a relationship with. Sometimes we allow new friends in our life that is not better than our old friends and then vice versa. Sometimes we got old friends that ain't better than our new friends. You got to know when to let a person go. You got to know when to, when to let a motherfucker go out your life and just let them go bye-bye. You know what I mean? Sometimes in a lot of ways, you're going to cross paths again. You're going to have people that pop back up in your life. You're going to have people that's constantly in your life, right? And sometimes that situation blurs the lines, They've been in your life so long, you stop seeing them for the, for, the, for the flaws or the attributes that they have as a person, and you just start accepting them for them. But in a lot of ways, the things that you're doing might not be for that person, and you'll fuck up what you're trying to get accomplished, what you're trying to do in your life by continually accepting the presence of a person that's not supposed to be around you at that at that moment in time while you're building them in your life period. Sometimes we'll have a person in our life that we're not supposed to have in our life, period. And these motherfuckers just never believe in you, never do this, never do this. You got that doubter ass friend, the friend that always doubts you or say something not possible. Da, da, da. You got to get away from that motherfucker. If you got a goal in mind, if you got something that you got to do with your life, you got to get away from the doubter ass friend. You know what I mean? It's cool to have them around to hate on another motherfucker that you don't want to hate on, right? <laughs> but keep it a bean, you can't have that type of person around you because when they done hating on that person, they and they, they not going to hate on themselves. They're going to hate on you. Just like you got people that you do business with at times that just can't do business right. You got people that just, they're not going to do business right at all. They're only in the business thing to gain, but they don't even know how to properly gain without staining their name, their business name. You know what I mean? Their name, basically, because whenever you're doing business, you're you. 
You know what I mean? If you're business, doing business um, as a different entity under a different corporation's name, then that's you could blame it all on the corporation. But whenever you're doing business, personal business, you stay in your name when you do bad business or have bad business practices. Or some people you already know you're not supposed to do business with. These niggas gonna try to fuck me over, scam me out of out of something, some way, somehow. They gonna try to take something off the top or leave something out the pot or jew me down on my merchandise on my product or you know what I mean? You got people like that. You can't do business with those type of people. Or if you do business with those type of people, try to do it through a third party because they don't respect how business is done. Or they just don't got the business acumen to be doing business uh, to be doing business right, because in a lot of times, in a lot of ways, when business go wrong, people end up dead, people end up hurt real bad, or they end up dead. So try to not do business with motherfuckers who don't know how to do business, cause they'll fuck up your business. Don't allow a motherfucker to work for your business or your corporation or work on under what you're trying to build if they don't have good business acumen. Got to get them the fuck out of there. You know what I mean? You might need a partner. And this might be your ace boom coon from day one. You ain't going to get nothing done with this motherfucker because he don't know how to do business. Or he's he looking at the plan and he see the idea, but he don't believe it'll work. Them non-believer motherfuckers. You know what I mean? Them non-believer motherfuckers. Get them the fuck out of here. You can't really build anything or, or, or maintain what you've built around a person like that because they only seeing... Oh, we paying out this and this. When is this going to start recouping? When is this going to start getting back? Sometimes the things you build ain't going to bring no money for a year, two years. You'll see little trickles coming in, something to keep you hopeful and and, and, and have faith in what you're building, right? But it's not really to the level where you want it to be or where it's got the potential to be. You got to stay fast. You got to stay in that race and you got to keep moving forward with it. You know what I mean? That's why, you know, a lot of things fail. A lot of people sell out and a lot of people just don't do anything at all because they didn't have the right energy behind it. They didn't have the right spirit. They didn't have the right spirit for it. They didn't have the, the, the tenacity to get up and go to gumption. You know what I mean? Sometimes there's a lot of people that got the talent, but they don't, they lazy. You know what I mean? Sometimes they need that 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 person who's not lazy to match their talent, who got the work effort, who got the work effort. They're going to put the work in. They're going to help you. They're going to put the work behind your talent, right? And then sometimes it's vice versa. Somebody might have the talent to do anything, right? You give them something, they're going to run with it, right? But they don't got the talent. They got the they got the work ethic, but they don't got the talent. They'll have to pair up with somebody. But at the same time, when you're pairing up and you're trying to work with somebody and you're trying to build something and you're trying to, you know, see something come to fruition, it's like, y'all got to make sure y'all too mesh. Y'all got to make sure that y'all, y'all spiritual energy is in the line. I mean, if it's not aligned, it'll work for a while. And you see these couples and these pairs and these people who, who are, who are great teams together. You know, on the outside looking in, you know, outwardly looking in, I'm like, damn, they look like a great team. It look like they got everything going for them. But behind closed doors, you know what I mean? Their meetings is always ending in fights or cursing at each other or this and that. They stay arguing. They can't see anything on the same level besides the business because the business is is, is working. The, build, the business is building. So that's the only thing they got in common, really, is the business. They don't really have anything in common with with one another. They just got together basically to build something. And then they find out that, damn, maybe this ain't the person that I was meant to be building something with. Hey, you know what I mean? It happens all the time. You see companies go down like that. You see, uh, you see teams, people that do TV shows and things like that. They'll wind up breaking up a whole cast of a TV show that had so much potential because the cast couldn't work together or the cast, they didn't like the director or they didn't like this. They didn't like that. And it's the same thing in every profession and every build with something that you're trying to uh, fulfill. It's like you have to match up with the right personality, the right character. You got to make sure that their soul, their spirit is in line. Their intellect is in line with the things that you're in line with. Otherwise it's not going to work. You have ones that can, that can pretend. You know, they're like gypsies, right? 
You got to be very careful with the gypsy type people because they're scammers. What they do is they can pretend and be anything. I see it all the time. You see fake people pretending to be races of different people that they're really not. You see all this type of stuff. And they'll get with you and they'll pretend like they got your vision. They got the best intentions for this, whatever project that you're working on, but they really don't. They're really there to bleed you dry and suck you dry. They'll come in and act like they want to support what you're doing and then wind up having you support what they're doing. And you like, when are we going to get back to this? But no, we got to see this come. We got to do this. For you got you to gotta ex excommunicado yourself with those type of people. You know, it happens a lot. It happened to me. It can happen to you. You know what I mean? I'm saying this. I'm saying this for the ones that haven't tried anything different. Who's thinking about trying something. Who's who's having these problems in whatever brand or company or, or whatever dream that they're pursuing. And they just can't see it come to fruition. You know what I mean? I'm saying this for them because they're going to run into these type of people or they're probably already in close communication. I've got somebody like this in a circle and I'm saying that so they can step back, get the big picture and realize that you got to get away from these people. You got to get away spiritually from these people. You can't have, and if you can't get away from these people, you can't let them have too much influence on what you're building. When you're trying to work, when you're trying to get something complete, don't even have their energy around if possible. Because some people you can't help but be around due to living situations, due to whatever you're going through, whether you're working, whether you're not working, whether you, you know, going somewhere and then they're a stranger just always popping up or they just there because they run the place, the facility where you're trying to get some work done at. You got to separate yourself from them. You know what I mean? It's like you'll always see them floating nearby. You know what I mean? You'll always see a predator floating nearby. You know what I mean? As if you're prey. Well, really, the only thing you're praying to do is not land yourself in jail by fucking somebody up or hurting somebody or or either having this person do something to you or scheme on you. Because a lot of times that's what happened too. a person will see you moving and see you see you glowing and see you shining and they're not getting none of that with you. They're not on board with you. So what they'll do is they'll try to shut your shit down. They'll try to either get you set up, get you robbed, um, um, throw a bitch at you who's going to set your life up, all types of shit. You know, not to call the women bitches, excuse me. But if you're a woman who 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 took advice from another man to interfere in another person's life to get in their pockets or to set them up in any type of way, that's bitch activity. So that's what I mean by bitch. You know what I mean? Because I, I don't want my daughter to be called a bitch. You know what I mean? I don't want no respectable woman being called a bitch. But a bitch is what a bitch is. You know, a bitch is what a bitch is, and they roll in a pack of bitches at times. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is why I'm saying you can't even rationalize or reason with a person that's not on your conscious level, on your on your on your same frequency, on your same vibration. Because trying to rationalize or reason with a person or have an intellectual conversation or a spiritual conversation with these type of people will lead you nowhere. They'll fuck you up spiritually sometimes. They'll leave you angry. They'll leave you leave the conversation with negative energy and a negative vibe because you could never really get your point of view across to these people or to this person, whomever you're trying to talk to or convey a message to. My thing is, it shouldn't be that hard to convey a message or explain yourself to anybody or explain your point of view to anybody. They should be able to understand that and get that by understanding the person that you are. How come is it that you can hear a person uh, 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 have a conversation with you on an intellectual level, on a spiritual level, and just try to reason with you and try to get advice or whatever. And you could always be the voice of reason and you could always be the one with great advice or see it from multiple different point of views. But the people you try to talk to never can see it from your point of view. Because you're talking to the wrong people. You're talking to the wrong spiritual vibration. You sp you're talking to somebody who's on a negative frequency. You know, they even they can even be on a positive frequency. 
if y'all frequency is not matching, because it's not always a negative person, they just just don't comprehend for whatever reason, whatever powers that be, whatever spiritual en energy that they hold, whatever their personality and their characteristic is, whatever their walk of life may be, is not allowing them to understand or comprehend what you're saying. You got to cease to say what you're saying. You got to stop talking to them because they're not. They're just going to keep you going through a loop. They're going to keep you going through a fucking loop, especially if they just don't grasp. They don't understand. They don't comprehend anything spiritually, physically, intellectually. Um, um, if you just don't get to get like personality wise, you clash and things like that. A lot of a lot of women out there, they'll get with a man and they'll stay with a man just because he could uh, please them sexually or not even sexually that he just got a lot of money and he'll buy him whatever they want. And that man will, will get this superimpose his characteristics of personality onto a woman. Because women are more susceptible to, to intake and bullshit and then mimicking what they hear or, or what they see from a person. Women are more susceptible for that. You know what I mean? They're more, you know, touchy feely in ways so they can take on other people's traits. One um one example is that one example of that is how when a woman hang around with another woman for so long, their menstrual, their menstrual cycles start to um, align with one another. You know what I mean? Those women start to start to dress alike. Those women will start to start to uh, like the same things, even if they totally different. You know, they'll start to uh, speak alike. You know what I mean? They'll start having the same point of views. Women is capable of doing that. But they know what they know what's in line with their spirit. They know they'll know what's in tune with them, right? But they can still take on who you're who who you're portraying to be or who you are. You know what I mean? Your personality, your character. They can always conform to exactly who you are. You know, women could do this with other women easily. And women could do this with men easily as well. But you gotta be careful because women will do this to you just to get in your pockets, just to set you up, exploit you. Uh, women will do this just because, you know what I mean, they, they they like the sex or whatever. They like this about you. They like that about you. When you get with them and they loving your personality, loving your character, they loving you for your intellect, they loving you for your personality, your character, I said that already, your spirituality, loving you for your intellect, it's okay when these women cling on to you. Right, it's okay when a woman cling on to you just off the pure love of your ghost, of who you are, of who you're trying to become, of of, of your journey that you're walking. But when this woman is is not trying to cling on to you for those things, and a lot of us we could tell, but we so enamored by her beauty, by her ass, by her titties, by the way she do this and do that or whatever, we get lost in that, and we'll pursue a bad thing. We'll pursue a woman that we know is no fucking good for us. We do that. We men, we we dogs. That's what we do. You see something you hope and you wish and you pray that this is the one. Because no, no man chase after a woman unless a man is scarred. No man chase after a woman and just pursue her for a wham, bam, thank you, man. If a man is pursuing a woman, it's because he really love her. He genuinely got feelings for her. He see, he see a future there. Now, when a man is hurt, been hurt before, been scarred, or, or seen another dude go through a lot of shit with these women, then he's in it for the wham, bam, thank you, man. You know what I mean? That he just, he don't care. He just want to knock it out and go. He'll lie, cheat, scheme, however he got to get the pussy. He'll do that. He'll stab his friend in the back to get some pussy. And then after that, he not dealing with the bitch. That man who, who's been hurt before, he'll see a man happy, happily married with a woman and still try to get that woman just so he could screw her one time and exit or screw her. And, and you know what I mean? And, and basically leave you, leave y'all with a mess on y'all hands because he ain't married. He ain't got no ties or attachments to anything y'all got going on. All he seen was he wanted to fuck something like that. And he got with your woman. He screwed her. And now he off to the races on to the next bitch. And, and vice versa. You got a lot of women that's like that too. You know what I mean? You got a lot of women that that that's been hurt before. And all she's in it, all she in it for is the paycheck. 
She don't care about none of that lovey-dovey bullshit you kicking. None of that shit. You you can wind and dine this woman. You can marry and all that shit. And then you wind up getting with a gold digger bitch who really just in it for to get whatever whatever they can get out of you. Whatever they can get out of you. They, they in for that. You know what I mean? Some of them, the worst kind is the ones that just want kids from you. The worst kind is the ones that just want to get with you to have children by you because they know that you got good uh, genes or something about you. You're smart. You're, you're talented. You're, you're this, you're that. They see that in you, and then they'll try to get uh, they'll, they'll try to get babies from you because they want babies to be able to do what you're doing. They might not be able to do, uh, want children living, living your type of life or doing this or doing that. But they know that the baby is cut from the same cloth as you. So whatever talents or attributes you have, the child will have. And that's what they really was in it for. It's that. And then the state rewards them for doing stuff like that by allowing them to then, once they get their children, once they get the baby that they want, exit out your life and then uh, get you for child support, sue you and put you in all this trouble. You know, if you if you're a guy that built something um, that's wealth, if you got any wealth or whatever, they could divorce you and get take half of something that they never even contributed to. There's a lot of famous guys that go through this. There's a lot of famous women that go through this. This is why I'm saying that you cannot rationalize reason or have a, a relationship. Even now, I'm adding that to the fold. You can't have a relationship with somebody who's spiritually different than you. If they're on a different frequency than you, you cannot be a part of these type of people's life. You got to find who spiritually is for you, who's intellectually for you. And all the time, you can't even say intellectually because intellectual intellect is something that's given and something that's taken. The intellect is very finicky because your intellect... You can know something without knowing anything at all, right? You can know something without being book smart. But you got a different type of a spiritual smartness, a different type of mental smartness where you could pick up on things real easy and comprehend very easy. So a lot of women will not get with a man because he don't got the college diplomas and the degrees and things like that, but he's still smart. And, uh, you know, a, a lot of women will go towards the dumb dude because you know, he's, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about right there. But anyway, you got to get with somebody that's spiritually on your same level. Intellect is, is, you know, uh, up in the air. You know, I'm going to say that because you got people who's not really big thinkers and things like that, but they had, they still have that same spiritual frequency as you. They're still good people. You know what I mean? They're still great for you, but their intellect might not be where you wanted to be at. And that's probably due to the fact that they've been through some shit in their life. You know what I mean? Whether they, whether they could comprehend the things that you comprehend on your level, you might been through a little bit more than them. You might know a little bit more than them, but you know what, if y'all spirits are in line, you just bring them up in that intellectual way. You bring them up in that, and you know, you, you smarten them up a little bit or dumb them down a little bit. You know what I mean? You can really shape and conform a person to you, especially if your if your spirit is in line, if your soul is in line with the person. Once you notice that they're the same on that same frequency as you, and you can connect with them, that's all it takes. You know the personality and the characteristic. That's you know that's up in the air. As long as they're not abusive person and things like that, that's cool. But if y'all spirits in line, that's, that's a win all day. You know, that's, those are the people you try to reason with. And those are the type of people that you should be trying to build with and connect with the ones that's spiritually, the one that they sold, the one that they frequency and their energy match your energy. Those are the ones that you want to connect to. Those are the ones you want to talk to. Those are the type of, those are the ones that you want to make music for. Yeah. You know what I mean? Those are the ones you want to write books for and do podcasts for your audience, your type of people. You know what I mean? Everybody else, they'll gravitate, they'll look. They Some of them might like it, some of them might not. But ones that's on your same frequency or your same vibration or understand where, where you're coming from, they're going to be your biggest supporters in life. You know, they're going to be the ones that, that be that wind beneath your wings when you can't, when you feel like you can't carry on and can't go on. You know what I mean? They're going to be the ones to help push you forward and drive you to those goals that you got to achieve. Because all of us have a calling in life. Most of us never even get to get to see our calling or get to even feel what our calling is in life. 
because we're too surrounded by people that has uh, personalities. We're surrounded by circumstances and things like that that don't allow us to really have a clear thought or, 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 or conceive clearly about what we got to do with our life. And then by the time you get into a place where you can see what you're supposed to do, you can see what, what the objective is, what, what, what your creator's plans was for your life. By the time you get to a place, you done fucked up your life. You know, you don't, you don't fucked off half your life. You don't fucked off your life until you 40, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, you don't fucked off damn near your whole life until you can live into that, into that, to, to that nature of, of what you're supposed to do, what's for you in life, until you can get back to that. And then you'll see a rejuvenation. You'll see a rejuvenation in your soul and your body and your mind. Once you're doing what it was that you were supposed to, that you was intended to do with your life, you'll see a sort of re rejuvenation. You'll feel like you're 15, 20, 25 again. Because now you're living in your passion. Now you're living in your nature. Now you're doing the things that you were supposed to do, that the creator put you here to do with your life. That's when you get a rejuvenation about yourself. That's when you feel like you don't need nobody else to get the, the work done that you need to get done. You know what I mean? When you feel that rejuvenation, it's a powerful fucking thing. And a lot of, a lot of artists felt that, man. A lot of artists feel it. And sometimes... You don't feel that rejuvenation until you have some type of reciprocity for the work that you put in. But we got to remember that we have to appreciate our own works. We have to appreciate the things that we're doing for ourselves, man. You know what I mean? We got to know what we want out of it, and we got to continue to build it, even if the light isn't shining on it. Even if it's something that you've been building in a dark place, in a dark corner of your house or your or your workplace, or, or, or wherever you live at, even if it's something that, that you just built right there, you got to, when you present this to the world, you know what I mean? You love the reciprocity that people smile and shine and laugh and love what you're doing. You know what I mean? You got to appreciate it first while it's in that dark place, while it's coming out of that, that rough patch. You know what I mean? You got to appreciate it. Cause ain't nobody going to appreciate the work that you putting in more than you. You know what I mean? Nobody, nobody will. You got to take the time also to appreciate others works. You know what I mean? You got to really appreciate, like I appreciate Kendrick Lamar that, that, uh, that concert he put on. Oh my God. Let me tell you, that was beautiful. The concert Kendrick Lamar, they not like us. They not like us. Freaky ass nigga, you're 69 God. Wah, 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 wah. That shit was powerful, man. How he had everybody unified on there. He had the whole West Coast unified. He had people from all over the world unified in his moment. You know what I mean? In that moment, he had he had the world unified. People on, on the same spiritual vibration. People on the same, of the same cloth. You know what I mean? People are the same personality and character it didn't matter your personality and characteristic right then and there you was intellectually aligned spiritually aligned with him popping out on that tour with everybody and everybody was in accordance everybody was at peace with one another everybody was vibing out on one another that was the tower of babel right there we witnessed the tower of babel happen right in front of our face you know, and that's how it is with our music. When we could get together, that's how it is with our books or anything we create in our podcast, anything that we create. When you could get everybody to see your vision and see the, the light that shines in whatever it is you create, you build that Tower of Babel. A lot of the corporations, they don't like it. A lot of these uh, industries, they don't like when a person got that much power, but they have no choice but to go with it. You know what I mean? Because... A lot of the corporations and things, they're evil. They got demonic energy. A lot of them don't want to see good things happen, no matter what their fucking mission statement is. A lot of these companies and corporations, they are about just dollar and generating that dollar. They'll try to latch on to an artist or somebody like that who got something going for themselves, like a hit song, or or, or they're getting um, um, a lot of views or clicks and things like that. They'll attach themselves to them 
just for that money. You know what I mean? Just because they, they selling or, or people like them, that spiritual energy, they got that synchronicity with uh that one, with that creator, and they pulling everybody on their vibe, and they building that Tower of Babel. They got to get with that person, and they're going to put money into that person, and they're going to be behind that person, but they still going to gonna they still got a level of evilness with them. So if you're a person and you out there, you got your first deal, you dealing with these companies and things like that, you still got to be careful because just because you signed a piece of paper that say that you with this company or that company or, you know what I mean, or, or they behind you or you got this deal or that type of deal with them, you still got to be careful with them because it's a such thing as paper genocide. Our, our ancestors went through paper genocide several times on this continent, in this country, where they signed paperwork saying that they was a part of this and making treaties with these people and that people and treaties with the government and things like that. And all they did was steal their land, get killed, get enslaved, get all type of experiments ran on them. They spiritually raped ancestors of, ancestors of ours through paper genocide. They broke us mentally physically, spiritually in a lot of ways. They over-sexualize our women and they and they uh, make our men women, uh, women beaters and shit like that or just schemers or just inmates incarcerate us or kill us or whatever. And this the same shit that they perpetuate in the day. You know, some people, they just want to get you on paperwork just so they can send somebody to whack your ass so they can get the insurance money from killing you. And then you signed off all your songs to them. So now they collecting off all your songs and shit like that and kick, kicking your family back kibbles and bits. That's why they really not even signing nobody no more. Really, people is just out here dropping music and shit like that. People is wanting independent shit because they don't want to be with the companies because they see them for the evil shit that they do. They got people that scout people in the neighborhoods or people that put other people on in the music industry and they get them signed for millions of dollars and things like that just because uh, it seemed like a good thing, but it's for an evil agenda. You could go in with great intentions and still come out doing the worst things or putting out music that, that you never intended to get to the youth and things like that because they pain you. So they going, they want to dictate to you how you create or what you put out. So even in that aspect, when you're dealing with companies and corporations, you can't even get in the bed or, or have, have a connection with a company that's not built spiritually, intellectually. They don't have the same goal in mind. A lot of companies are offering you a million dollars, but they want you to compromise your soul, your personality, your intellect. They want you to change your whole character. They want you to build up a different persona about yourself, one that's not natural. They want you to wear dresses. They want you to pretend like you're a faggot. They want you to do this. They want you to do all this gimmicky shit to sell, to sell something that you can sell naturally just by being you. You know what I mean? If, if it's not something that's natural to me and you want me to do it, I don't want to do it. I'm not going to do it. You know what I mean? If it's not, if you want to, if you want to put a man in a dress like a woman, it's not cool. And they'll promote that to you like it's a joke or something. Oh, let's jokingly do this with this guy. You know what I mean? But it's not a joke. It's a ritual. They get you to sell your soul in bits and pieces. When they know that you know in your heart and soul that something is wrong and you still do it, you sold your soul. You'll, soul, you'll sell your soul in little bitty chunks of light at a time. Because that's what your soul is, that light. Right? So you'll sell your soul in little itty bitty chunks of light at a time. Because you're looking at it as not being no harm. I'm getting this check or this or that. You, so you out here doing all these different things. But little bit by little bit, you keep on compromising yourself and who you are and your morals and your values and what you stand on. And after that, they got you. They got you taking weird pictures. They got you saying no diddy and paws and no homo and shit like that. They got you thinking in, 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 in a different in a different frame of mind than, than you naturally meant to think. 
social media got you laughing at shit that ain't even funny. Pressing the like button on shit you don't even like. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, they'll send you some shit you do like, though. They'll send you some some booty shakers or some shit like that. You know what I mean? To, to, to take your attention off of what's real in life. To take your attention off the things you might have been searching for. Like a lot of times I'll be going online and do my pro promoting and stuff like that. And then a big ass butt will pop up or, or a pair of titties will pop up on my screen. And now I'm looking at that instead of doing the promoting that I was supposed to be doing. I wind up looking at ass and titties for another half an hour. And then coming out of that being like, oh shit, I was supposed to p p post this on, uh, on other, on other platforms and things like that. I'm supposed to be doing promoting. I got caught up in looking at, a woman's beauty, and there's nothing wrong with that because women are beautiful. They they're naturally beautiful, you know. Um, you know they they could be great at times, they could be bad at times, but all the times they are beautiful. You know, even even when even when a woman's not so great, even if, even if a woman is being evil in nature, she's still beautiful for some reason. Even when a woman is is doing bad, kicking your ass and calling you names and doing this, and she's still beautiful. You know what I mean? It's just it's just even better. It just it just gives it another another level of beauty when a woman is not being evil and beautiful. When a woman is posing and doing this and that, that's beautiful. It may be beautiful for me because I'm looking at it and I'm seeing the beauty in it. But what about that woman's uh dad? What about that woman's uh fiance or husband or boyfriend or whatever? He might not. He might not want to. The dad definitely don't want his daughter on 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 no fucking social media, posing with her ass out or with her titties out or something like that. So what's beautiful for me might not be beautiful for somebody else, another male out there somewhere, and we all connected. So it's like I try to think about that even before I look at you know certain things online, even though it's there and it's there to get you caught up and distracted. Plus, a woman, you know, they want to always show their beauty off and what they could do. Look what I can do. But, <laughs> but that's not either here nor there. It's like, um, man, how long? I just been sitting up here talking for about forty five minutes. Whew, give me a break. Hold on one second. Gotta take these seconds, man. It's just. Oh man, yeah, but it get like that at times. Mm. My shit ain't dead no more. Yeah, man, it gets like that at times, especially when you you out here just trying to do your thing, trying to create, trying to motivate, trying to um, be who you were meant to be in your life, you know what I mean? Some shit just happens, some shit go awry, some shit just, you know, and it's all because of the people we choose to pull in or be around, the things we choose to entertain, the chain, the things we choose not to do. You know what I mean? It's important to get that regimen. It's important to, to, to put that work in, man. It's, it's very important to put that work in because or, or getting a regimen together. Once you start once you start disciplining yourself to doing whatever it is that you want to do in your life, right? You got to have things in line. What you want to do is you want to start working out. You want to start eating better. You want to start thinking right. You want to be spiritually right. Because if everything's not aligned, you could easily find yourself lacking in different areas of your life. You know what I mean? It's like you got to make time to work out. You know what I mean? For your physical being, your body and everything, you know, because you want this body to be able to continue to do whatever it is that you want to do with your life. You want this body to be able to 
to to to to withstand or go through any situation that it has to go through, to meet any obstacle and be able to supersede um, um, the expectations of what it could do, you know. And it's the same with the mind. You got to work that mind out. You got to work out your intellect, so that way you could you could you could. So you don't run into stimming and stammering over your words like me right now. But <laughs> but yeah, you got to work your intellect out so this way you can be able to do the things that you intend to do on a daily basis. So you can conceive the books that you plan on writing. So that you can conceive the podcast that you plan on doing. So you can conceive the lines for the song that you're trying to create. You got to work your intellect out for that. You got to have a lot of input. You want to be... Not so self-absorbed and egotistic, even though a lot of people, that's their process and much respect to them. But me, I have to look for sources outwardly that's speaking on the same things that I'm speaking of. So that way I could do my form of research on different topics that I want to tackle. Is that is that same thing with everything that I do. You know, before I get into something, I like to research it. Or while I'm into it, while I, while I see myself doing the things that, that I want to do or that I that I have to do, I have to do my research. That way I can gain more proficiency in what it is I'm trying to do. Proficiency is everything. It don't got to be perfect. It just got to be proficient. It got to be proficient and it got to, you know, work for you, basically. You know what I mean? Whew. It's coffee doing me in, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get done with this coffee. I'm going to work out some more. Um, I'm going to work on some more books. I'm going to work on some writing. I'm not going to say books. I'm going to work on writing a little bit more. I'm going to work on refining a little bit more. Uh, processing. Processing my thoughts and processing what I'm going through. And... Um, that's it. I'm going to create something else after this. I don't know in what space I'm going to be in. I don't know where I'm going to be at. You know what I mean? But it's like, I know what I'm going to do right after this. I'm going to work out a little bit more because this is giving me an energy right here. And it's like, I got to do something with that energy. So I'm going to have to work out. I'm going to have to create something else. And then I'm going to try to take a nap. You know what I mean? I'm... That's how I start my day in a lot of ways. That's how I start my day. You know what I mean? But, you know, one of the best things in the morning besides waking up is folders in your cup. Hype. Goddamn. Y'all tell about my eyes wired on this fucking coffee? Y'all see it? I do like coffee and tea mix. I put like one one tea bag with, you know, half a cup of coffee and do like a half and half. You know, kind of like they do with the lemonade and the iced tea. Call it a half and half. I do a half coffee, half tea. I call it uh, cough tea. Or t- tea off. Tea off or cough tea. I don't know. I don't know. I'm still coming up with it. But on a serious note, man, you just got to be careful who you try to reason with, who you try to have conversations with, and the personalities that you allow in your life. Because, you know, in my experience, I, I've allowed different personalities in my life, and I've learned from a lot. I learned from a lot of different personality and characteristics. But at the same time, I've been hurt and scarred and scorned by a lot of the people and characters that I let in my life and sometimes it's not even my choice to let these people in my life it's just they're in my life because they're family or they're in my life because they're friends that I've known forever or they're in my life because I know them through circumstance so you know what I mean they might be people in the uh, in the neighborhood or whatever that I got to know that that I befriended or that befriended me or whatever and it's like those people in your life and it's like you, you just can't you know, when you notice that, that y'all don't clash or whatever, when you notice that y'all clash and this person isn't conducive to what you have to do, because a lot of people will cling to you just so they see what you're trying to do or they see what you're building 
or they know you can do something great. They try to cling to that idea or whatever. And it's like, a lot of them are just clinging because they want something to talk about. A lot of them is clinging because if you do come up, they don't want to be excluded. And, and, and you coming up and you having something so they could always call you and reach out to get something from you or whatever. You know what I mean? I've never been that type of person. If I know you, if I know you for a long time and you're doing well for yourself, I could be in the worst situation in the world and I still won't call you or whatever because I need something from you. I just, oh, I know this person can help me. I'm going to just, da, 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 da. no, if it's not like, if this, if we never been like that and if you don't get the natural inclination to reach out to me and look out for me or whatever, it's like, what's the point of me reaching out? What's the point of me really reaching out and asking for anything or asking for a favor or trying to do business with you if we never been connected before? If we never been connected before like that, or we never had no dealers or whatever, or it never even crossed your mind to even, damn, what's up with boy? Let me check on him or whatever. It's like, what's the use of me ever reaching out? Or what's the use of you ever reaching out to me? That's why a lot of people try to connect themselves to so many people that's around them because they don't want to lose out on something that that they could have had a part of, that they could have been a part of. And even though they're not a part of it, they'll still try to reach out like, damn, you finally got that popping. I remember we was trying that. No, nigga, we wasn't trying nothing. I was trying. And you was always there a couple times. You was a few times you were there, but you wasn't really doing what I was doing. That's how that shit be. You know, a lot of people will see... A lot of people will see what you're trying to build, right? And they might be trying to build the same thing. Or they may have been doing what you're trying to do. And then you come on the scene, they might see better talent than you, better work ethic and things like that. So they'll hold you back. That personality will hold you back. So that way they don't uh, get any light taken off them. So they don't take no shine away from them. You know what I mean? They They'll start to slight you. They'll try to talk shit about you, talk behind your back and all that shit. It's like, that's why it's so important to really just attach with who you vibe with. Make sure you're getting with somebody that's on that same frequency level, that's on that same vibe as you. You know what I mean? Make sure their soul is in line because just because they're a person that, that have things or they might have the facility that you need to use, they might not still be... You know, the right person to even had it. Some people just be in a position because they just got the position. Somebody put them in that position or they found themselves there and they just look at it as a cash cow or whatever. But at the same time, they don't really give a fuck about the work that you're putting in. Or as a matter of fact, they might not want to see you do the work that you're trying to do. They might not want to see you in the position that you're shooting for, that you're going for. But they're there and they're kind of like gatekeeping you. Because they want to charge you, overcharge you. Or they're never there when you have to do something uh, uh, very important for, for whatever craft it is that you're working on in whatever field. Mm -hmm. Some people just have you there because they know that you need the opportunity to do what you're doing, right? And they'll exploit that to have you on a, on a note. I talked about it earlier. They'll exploit you to get you to do the things that they want to do because they know the things that you want to do they're tied to. They got an easy way to, to let you do what you want to do. So you kind of trying to bar the system thing. One hand wash the other. I'm going to do some work for you right here. And you're going to let me do my work that I want to do over here. But they'll never let you do the work that you got to do over here. But they'll stay having you doing the work for them right here. But you're like, dog, look, I got to transition. I got to stop doing this for you so I can be over here doing what I got to do for me. You said I could use your facility. You said I could do this and that. But now when I'm going to use it, it's a problem because you want me to stay away from that shit doing that because you want me to keep helping you over here. They energy thieves, man. They energy fucking thieves, man. They energy fucking thieves. They were still the very essence of who you are. They'll steal your talent. They'll steal your ideas, your intellectual property. They'll steal your views and they'll spread rhetoric, rhetoric about you. They'll spread rumors and lies about you to have nobody else deal with you or help you out. Real shit. I've been there. I can attest. I can attest to everything that I'm saying. 
Because I've been there. Money is the curse. It's the root of all evil. It's the root of these motherfuckers out here that's just, you know what I mean, in these positions who spin our wheels on a daily basis, who 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 are dream, who are natural dream killers. And, and anything that you feel like you're supposed to be doing with your life is not a dream, it's a calling. I hate when somebody, I don't hate, you know, I respect when somebody talk about dreams and aspirations and things like that. I take that back. I love when somebody talk about their dreams and aspirations. But your dream is not just a dream. Your dream is not just aspirations. Your dreams are your calling. Your dreams and your aspirations are the things that you were supposed to do with your life that you never got a chance to do. Some of us are fortunate enough to have people usher us into our calling and the things that we're supposed to do with our life when we're a young age. And that way we can grow up and, and being and, and seeing and doing the things that we're supposed to do with our life. But when you're an older person and you know you have a calling and you have things that you're supposed to do with your life, people will try to keep you away from your calling. They'll try to keep you away from pursuing your dreams and achieving your goals. And it's sad because all of that is done because they're energy thieves. Once they have you somewhere and they know you're driven about something, they'll try to use that drive, that driving force, that spiritual energy, that intellectual energy in their own way. It's like putting you in a jar or putting you in a glass and using you as a light bulb. You know what I mean? This is what they do. They'll really put your energy, your spiritual energy, your talents, your 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 work ethic and everything. They'll put you in a bulb and screw you in a socket and use you as a fucking light bulb, man. You know, I, I, I can't really give you any clearer example than that. But if you're a person that's being used for your energy and for your light and you're being screwed, screwed with like a light bulb, when you're being put in that socket and somebody's flipping your switch on and off, you know it. You know it and you feel it. And you know what I'm saying is true. Because this is what they do, man. This is what they do to us all. You know what I mean? I, I don't want to be nobody else's light bulb but my own. I don't want to be nobody else's light bulb but my children. You know, I use me to do what the fuck I got to do for, 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 for me. And we can come up together. But don't use me and in, intend to use my energy in the ways that you want to use it. I leave money on the table for shit like that. I leave money on the table for people trying to use me in the ways that I'm not meant to be used. I leave money on the fucking table for that. I'll never fuck with your organization again. I'll never come into your venue again. If I notice that you were just using me. And not just using me, spinning my wheels. Not just using me, setting me the fuck up, helping conspire against me in, in a lot of different ways with a lot of different people for a lot of different reasons. I will never fuck with you again. That's just who I am. You know, it's sad because a lot of the people that, that I have these disconnections with, I know that they're people of affluence and can help you along in your future and they can help you along getting, getting to where, where you have to be in your life. But once I notice that they're that they're setting me up, that they're uh, conspiring against me, that they're exploiting me, that they're just using me as a light bulb, that they can screw in and flip my fucking switch on and off, I don't fuck with them no more. And it's sad because they might still reach out for me or even have hopes that I might reach out to them in the near future or whatever so they could get back, they could get that light bulb back, right? I'm not I'm not. I just don't do that. I don't. Once you fuck me over, I don't care if you're a friend, if you're family, whoever you are. Once you fuck me over and once I notice who you are, right? Once I've gathered enough intel on who you are, I know exactly how I want to deal with you. And sometimes I just don't want to deal with you at all. Most times I just don't want to deal with you at all. Once you show me that what type of person you are. If you're not on my same vibe, if you're not on my spiritual frequency, if I figure out you're a fake person, uh, it's like, I'm done with you. I can't deal with you. You know what I mean? Because y'all about bullshit. Y'all about games. I leave money on the table for that shit, man.
all day long. I leave money on the table for that shit, man. I just won't fuck with you. I won't. You know what I mean? Especially when I know this is like only a fool would notice something ain't good for him and keep running into the same trap. That's like a mouse that just want that's just want the peanut butter, but he gonna keep on going into that trap. He gonna keep getting parts of his body snapped in this fucking trap just to get this cheese or just to get this peanut butter. You know what I mean? I'm tired of being the one, you know, um, being led astray, run amok, done any type of way by any type of person because, you know, um, whatever a situation may be right now with me or, you know what I mean, or me trying to gain some type of uh, leeway in what it is that I'm trying to do with my life. And I see the potential there, but you're using that like, like a carrot on the string that you bait a horse with. A lot of these people, they use their their money, their facility, their uh, their kindness, their false kindness and everything, just to bait you in, like a carrot on the string, just to bait you in. And once you get in there, all they're doing is using, they're going to put you right in that glass and use you for a light bulb where they can flip your switch anytime they want to. It's about your spiritual energy. It's about your spiritual energy. And it's about them constantly using you at the end of the day. But that's the end of my podcast. I'm done for now. Uh, this has been Mr. Pagan, over and out. Go check out the books. Go check out the music. Definitely check out the podcast. I'll be bringing more game stream. I love having fun on the game stream, John. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Peace. Thanks for viewing. Peace. Love y'all.